17th season. Tonight we bring you football, boxing, tennis and darts. <laughs> The Milk Cup has a new trophy. Well, Liverpool won the old one outright. And tonight we go to the Shea in Halifax for a match of startling contrast. The visitors are Spurs sitting top of the league, while the home club lies six from the very bottom. Just what does it all mean for Halifax Town? Well, it means a great deal to the club generally because we've been struggling for a few years in the bottom four of the fourth division. And financially, it's a wonderful thing for us today. We're making the most of it. It's uh, been enjoyed by the whole townspeople as well as the officials and directors at this club. We're proud to have Tottenham here tonight. It's a great boost to the club and to the town and uh, we hope for a favourable result at the end of it. And there was great atmosphere at Wembley last night surrounding the reappearance of heavyweight Frank Bruno coming back to action after defeat. If Frank had any doubts about how the puppet would receive him, they were soon dispelled. I can promise you spectacular action from that bill. And talking of comebacks, there's seldom been a better one than that made this year by British tennis star John Lloyd. Tonight he tells us how he came out of the pit of despair. I remember thinking when the ball would come to me, even in slow motion, if I, I thought I could not hit this ball over the, over the net into court. It was incredible. It was like I was a park player and I just suddenly was, my legs would not move and I was uh, so nervous, I just wanted to be off that court. I did not want to be on the tennis court again. In an amazingly honest confession, Lloyd also reveals the part his wife Chris played in his recovery. Our dance action takes us back up north again, this time to Redcar, where the ever-confident Eric Bristow takes another step towards yet another title, the British Professional Championship. 180! Bristow's quarter-final against Bob Anderson will be on your screen shortly after 11 o'clock. And just six weeks after the Olympic boxing tournament in Los Angeles, Sports Night reveals a plan that could send our boxers into the next Olympics with a much better chance of medals. Well, in a few moments, Halifax Town versus Spurs, but first the rest of tonight's football results from John Watson. The Milk Cup second round first leg. Chelsea 3, Millwall 1. Halifax Spurs in just a moment. Leicester City 4, Brentford 2. Manchester United 4, Burnley 0. Newcastle United 3, Bradford City 1. Sheffield United 2, Everton 2. Stoke City 1, Rotherham United 2. Now in Scotland, the Skull Cup semi-finals, also first leg, Hearts 1, Dundee United 2. Rangers 4, Meadowbank 0. There's a World Cup qualifying result tonight from the group involving the Republic of Ireland, and it's Denmark 1, Norway 0. But bad news for Northern Ireland in the European Cup Winners' Cup. In the first round second leg there, Hanram Spartans of Malta 2, Valamina 1, so the Maltese team win 3-1 on aggregate. So pride of place tonight goes to third division Rotherham United, who revive memories of last season's Milk Cup exploits by winning tonight on the ground of first division Stoke City. The goal, which came two minutes from the end from Tony Simmons, gave Rotherham a 2-1 advantage to take into the second leg at Millmore. Now Brentford also looked set for victory on first division territory when they led 2-0 at Leicester with just nine minutes to go. But Leicester then scored four times to totally transform the tie. Mark Hughes, Manchester United's rapidly developing striker, got a hat-trick against Burnley. This after Brian Robson had put United in front after just 13 seconds. Chelsea's Kerry Dixon got his first goal since the opening day of the season when he scored twice in the 3-1 win over Millwall. Crowd trouble was said to be minimal at Stamford Bridge, although there was fighting in South London on the way to the match. Late goals at Newcastle, where Kenny Wharton scored five minutes from the end to earn them a 3-1 win over Bradford City, and at Bramall Lane, where Everton's Derek Mountfield scored 12 minutes from time to equalise against Sheffield United. Well, now for our football action, Milk Cup, second round, first leg. And one of those matches that inspires cup fever. 
At 4th Division Halifax, the visitors are the mighty Tottenham Hotspur, currently lording it at the top of the league. The only table Halifax top, I'm afraid, is the list of applicants for re-election. They had to do just that at the end of last season, for the 14th time in their history. So, the biggest occasion at the Shea Ground for many a season, and up there, savouring all that atmosphere, is Barry Davis. A scene which is a part of the tapestry of the English game, and in its way, a triumph of survival. For those who have fought to keep Halifax Town alive, and 14 times they've had to go cap in hand to the Football League to seek for re-election, tonight's match offers a reward in feeling and in finance. The Spurs, the Shea, as this tiny little ground in a Yorkshire Dale is known, may be but a stopping point on the season's first road to Wembley. But for the regular Halifax supporters among a crowd some eight times greater than their usual league gate, tonight is the stuff of dreams. That's their lineup, six of the 12 new to the club this season, three teenagers, one 20 year old. And with the exception of Paddy Roach, who spent nine years at Manchester United, names really known only to football's beak. The transfer fees paid to put that team together is rather less than Tottenham's weekly wage bill. Adam Little is the older brother of Brian of Aston Villa, who scored the winning goal in this competition back in 1977. And Jeff Cook, once of Stoke, will be happy to do battle with an old buddy. Garth Crooks, who also started his career there, and whose form on Saturday against Aston Villa means that Clive Allen's return after suspension takes him only as far as the substitutes bench. Mickey Hazard has a thigh strain, and so he's replaced in midfield by Steve Perriman, whose place at right back is taken by another international, Danny Thomas. The referee for this second round, first leg match, is Mark Scott of Nottingham. The fixture really couldn't offer a greater contrast, but though there are two legs of the tie, for Halifax Town in the blue shirts and white shorts, it's really only about the next 90 minutes. What might happen at Tottenham in a fortnight's time should be put clearly out of their mind. It's Gallagher's first touch. Here's Watson. Gary Mabbott. A thousand Tottenham supporters in the crowd. Steve Perriman. Wide on the left, Tony Galvin. Wearing his favoured number nine. And might have a crack. Oh, and a good one too by Tony Galvin. Who's a local boy here. He was born just up the road at Huddersfield. And he was given a lot of room then. And hit a real curl that just went over the angle of uh, post and crossbar. Is Roach. Watson with the throw. Thornburg trying to make the run. And the first opportunity, but he really had the stretch for it. The Jeff Cook. Little who set up the opportunity. No problem for Pod. Pod, one of the senior citizens, 32 years old, came from Bradford City in the close season. Gallagher underneath it with Stevens. Falco. Nil at his back. Crooks. Chidozi on the right. Thomas behind him. Tottenham putting four into the box. One of the Mavits. But Chidozi testing the surface when he didn't want it. It's not a particularly good clearance. Straight to low. Cook. Well, a nice idea looking for little. And it almost worked. Thornber. Thomas. The 
free kick will be given. Well, the referee seemed to indicate he would give it, but uh, the linesman was flagging in Halifax's favour, but in the end, play continued. This young Thornburg. That's one of the teenagers. Paul Miller. Watson. That's a chase for low. Watched by Billy Air. Chidozi. Good work. And Thornba. And here's Falco. It's a good try. Confidence of a man who's already scored seven times this season. Doesn't hesitate from the far edge of the area as we looked. Comfortable turn. Again, he was given a bit of room as Garvin was earlier. Caught slightly in two minds, but it fell for him. Strong challenge by Miller. And Simon Lowe, who came here from Barnsley. Cook is waiting in the middle. And the flag is up for offside. Peter Shreves, the Spurs manager, deciding to join those on the bench. Chidozi, first chance to try and get a run at Watson. Watson held him up, it was good enough. Thomas, poor waiting. It came off the post from Falco. Buddy Roach really searching for the ball. It was past him and hit the base of the woodwork. Here's Gallagher. And it's a cup tie of incident and one obviously being enjoyed by the crowd. Watson. Thornba. Needed a little more composure. Well, certainly the shot had beaten Paddy Roach. Problem for air, but not for Roach. <laughs> Get out of my way. Miller. And Bull Perriman. Watson. Slightly miscued. Low. Hud. Foul by Crooks. Just a bit of elbow. I don't think there's any question. There was a definite push. Hud. Ball seemed to stick there for a moment. Good header by Low. And Thornba couldn't keep it down. By no means an easy one, and Lowe applauds the attempt. Oh, what a good header by the number nine. Todd who hit the long ball. Look at this, he knew where the defender was. In came Thornba, but the bounce was a bit high. And he couldn't get over the top of the ball. I think he got underneath it, and it went over the crossbar. through the first half well, an interesting first leg here leaders of the first division certainly being made to battle here's Chidozi out by nil little I mean, 
little. You know, his brother also started at Aston Villa, but he went to a few points after that. Thomas Chidozi. Chidozi. A lot of pace. Must be by Falco. Number eight scores goal number eight of the season. And it was the pace of Chidozi which set up the opportunity, which produced a simple and clinical finish. Watson really not with a hope of catching Chidozi here. Any challenge would have been dangerous, and look at that. So easy, but so well done. So the first division leaders have the lead in the 26 minutes. Play by Lowe. Little. Mabbots. Watson. Perryman. Steve Perryman, who survives from the successful Tottenham League Cup sides of the early 70s. Tottenham crowd have been watching him now for 15 years. making ground by throws in one or two moving off for half time cups of tea and everybody can go now as the players come off the field with Mark Falco the scorer of the only goal and following a goal scored by a Tottenham centre forward of days gone by 31 years ago in fact when Tottenham played here in the fifth round of the FA Cup when Len Dukeman scored and Tottenham went on to win by three goals to nothing Half-time in the Milk Cup of 1984, Spurs 1, Halifax Town 0. Some early autumn dew trapped in lush-looking turf. Uh, really, Spurs can have no complaints about a first-class pitch, which is a great tribute to the work of Norman Southernwood, who, during the time that uh, host pipes weren't allowed because of the drought, used the bath water after the players' training to keep his pitch in this condition. One might even suggest that it's a pitch too good for an upset, but uh, that remains to be seen. First free kick of the half. Leaves uh, Barry Gallagher limping a little bit. And produces a Halifax free kick. Villiers will take it. Met by Miller. Stevens rather uncomfortably away. That's a good header from Little to Pod. It's Galvin who covered the forward movement of Cook.
Gallagher's thinking wasn't quite as quick as that of Simon Lewis. Falco. Crooks. Falco. Six foot three of Adam Nil in prone position to get the ball out. Thomas. He's got a lot to play for in this match, Danny Thomas. Place back in the first choice lineup. And if he could do that, there might be further hopes in store for him. Gallagher. Watson. Seen with Perryman then because there was a clash off the ball which looked accidental to me but it certainly took an attacker out of the play low in the six yard box free kick in fact has been given just on the edge of the area Indeed, it couldn't be much closer low has come right out nil was taken a position on the near post here's Watson came off Falco fell fortunately little Mabbott good header Cook was the attacker Thornburg Thomas, away go Chidozi. Shorter to Galvin. Here's Chidozi. Crooks far post. Falco in the middle. Here's Falco. His second of the night. Coming in the 56th minute. Well, they say the best attacks are those of simplicity, and the best football is that of simplicity. Chidozi went away after Thomas had initially played it short to Galvin, and there was Falco waiting alongside Crooks, Falco's second goal of the evening. And I mentioned at half-time he'd followed a famous centre-forward of other days and then Dukeman in the FA Cup tie here back in 1953. He's now done what Les Bennett did that particular afternoon and scored twice. for Halifax. Their hopes of following their FA Cup success against Malcolm Allison's Manchester City back in 1980 in the third round seem to have disappeared. It's Perryman. Gallagher. Low. He needed rather too many touches. Much room for manoeuvre, to be fair to him. Gallagher, fine save by Ray Clements. Oh, that's the mark of the man. He hasn't needed to be in the game. But when he was called upon, he saved from point-blank range. Really did very well indeed. Okay, covering the near post alongside Thomas. Moving out a little bit further. Might have gone anywhere. In fact, it goes out off Kendall for the goal kick. Ray Clements began his Liverpool career in this competition 16 years ago yesterday, playing against Swansea in a League Cup tie. Pod. Very 
kick against Chris Hewton. Referee alongside. But I don't think the air was rattled between them. Gallagher. taking his total to nine but it really was a very good move room for Jadozi and Barco appearing just on the edge of the six yard box had a parry but couldn't be held Nevitt Garvin. Space for Jadozi, they'd all been pulled. Came off Watson. He has a few words. 18-year-old Thornburg. before the season started. What a great piece of play by Steve Perriman. Look at the face of the man. Left them all for dead and a lovely little floated chip, which was such an invitation to Crooks. 3-0 to Spurs and a goal of class. goal of great importance to Tottenham bearing in mind that they play the second leg of this second round tie in the Milk Cup in the same week as they play the live match against Liverpool and they will be happy not to have that much to do in the second leg against this fourth division side and Crooks no doubt delighted to get on the score sheet for the first time for the senior team this season Jadozi, Perriman. Oh, here goes Crooks again. Roach to meet him. I think maybe Crooks will now put behind him the disappointment that he felt in not scoring with his head against Aston Villa when Mervyn Day denied him so well. Stevens. by nil Gallagher Gallagher and through Miller not too many do that Cook Stevens across go kick Stevens. 
Thomas takes over as the winger. Crooks, time to look up. Got a bit of curl in that, but the goalkeeper has come well forward. Stevens and Gallagher arm linked. Galvin. Chris Hewton. Crooks. Falco in the middle. Galvin has gone there as well. Stevens. Lowe looks to see if any help is at hand. Oh, maybe I did him an injustice. Thornburg. Yes! Gallagher. Oh, did I see Ray Clement smiling? Or did he deceive me? Certainly looking a bit thoughtful now. Thornburg's studded cross. And Gallagher's header that I think Ray Clements thought was going wide. Well, it's given the home crowd good reason to cheer. They've scored against the first division leaders, albeit the first division leaders have now scored a fourth goal and the second for Garth Crooks. Another beauty, it has to be said. A lot of room again for Chidozi. And I suspect that Crooks got away from his man too, as he certainly did, got in front. 4-1 to Spurs. Second for Crooks. And a reply of some quality after surprisingly conceding one at the other end. Here's low. <laughs> Kendall's shot. Nil, and blocked on the line. It's Kendall who turned on it. Lillo won it in the air. And it seemed almost as the goalkeeper, with a bit of help, sat on it. Well, the match seemed to be dying and suddenly it's burst into flame once more. The result certainly isn't in doubt, but uh, the football is being maintained. Pretty high pitch of excitement. Well, Clements certainly seemed to have a little bit of fortune. The header was from Neil. That's Kendall who turns on it. Not even sure whether it reached Ray Clements. Corner saved. Low, it only sets up Mabbott. Crooks, Galvin, Guten sprints forward. Speed all over this Tottenham team. Crooks, who like Falco wants the hat trick. is up or offside but play will continue and here's Crooks and he's being held but it doesn't matter he has his hat trick 
Watson tried to pull him back. He got that half yard ahead. Long ball forward. He got between the two. There's the moment of the pull, but still he managed, managed to toe poke it in. Off seemingly his wrong foot. A little knock in the process. But he has a hat trick, and Spurs have five. Thornburg. Garth Crooks trying to shrug, shrug off his knock. Oh, look at the pace he showed to get between the two, and he was held there and still found time for the flick with his left foot. Came off the instep. scoring twice and a second half hat-trick for Garth Crooks with Barry Gallagher getting the consolation goal for Halifax Town a moment really for Steve Perriman to remember how beautifully he made the third and for Halifax consolation in the fact that after they play the second leg at Tottenham, they pick up two and a half thousand pounds for going out in the second round of the competition. And here tonight at the Shea, record receipts of 16,383 pounds. That figure confirming that there is still football life in Halifax and indeed in the fourth division in general. But while Spurs were preparing for that Milk Cup tie, I saw their two injured midfield stars, Ozzy Ardiles and Glenn Hoddle, play for the youth team this afternoon against an English school's FA under-18 side at the Barclays Bank Ground in West London. Now, it was only Hoddle's second match in seven months, and it was the first game Ardiles had played since a cartilage operation. 